It was one of the most daring and sophisticated crimes ever committed. A heist that stunned the world and baffled the authorities. A group of thieves managed to break into a heavily guarded vault in the heart of Antwerp, the world's diamond capital, and steal a fortune in jewels and precious metals. How did they pull off this seemingly impossible feat? Who were they? And what motivated them? And what happened to the loot, which remains largely unrecovered to this day? This is the untold story of the Antwerp diamond heist and how it happened. The heist was the culmination of a long and meticulous planning by a team of Italian criminals, led by Leonardo Notar Bartolo, a charismatic and experienced jewel thief. Notar Bartolo had been operating in the European diamond trade for years, posing as a legitimate dealer and gaining access to the exclusive and secretive world of diamond merchants. He had also been scouting the Antwerp World Diamond Center, a high-rise building that housed hundreds of diamond offices and a massive underground vault where traders stored their valuable goods. Nota Bartolo had rented an office in the building and used it as a base to study the security systems and routines of the vault. He also recruited a group of accomplices, each with a specific skill and role. They included Elio Donorio, a locksmith and alarm expert, Ferdinando Finotto, a mechanic and driver, Pietro Tavano, a muscle man and lookout, and a mysterious fifth man, known only as the genius, who was a master of electronics and hacking. The group spent months gathering information, equipment and materials for the heist. They used hidden cameras, microphones and scanners to monitor the vault and its surroundings, they obtained copies of the keys, codes and blueprints of the vault. They acquired tools and weapons such as drills, crowbars, guns and bombs. They also prepared disguises, fake IDs and getaway vehicles. They left nothing to chance and rehearsed every detail and scenario. The heist took place on the night of February 15, 2003, a Saturday, when the vault was closed and the building was empty. The group entered the building through a fire escape and made their way to the basement, where the vault was located. They disabled the security cameras, sensors and alarms. Using a combination of technical skills, brute force and ingenuity, they opened the vault door, which had a complex lock with 100 million possible combinations, using a homemade device that mimicked the magnetic field of the lock. They entered the vault, which was filled with hundreds of safe deposit boxes, each containing millions of dollars worth of diamonds, gold, silver and other precious items. The group worked quickly and quietly, using metal cutters and drills to open the boxes. They selected the most valuable and portable items and stuffed them into duffel bags. They also took some documents and papers, which they later burned, to create confusion and destroy evidence. They avoided touching anything else and left no fingerprints or DNA traces. They exited the vault, reactivated the security systems and left the building. They loaded the bags into their cars and drove away. The whole operation took less than an hour and the group managed to steal an estimated $100 million worth of loot, making it the largest diamond heist in history. The heist was discovered the next morning, when the traders returned to work and found their boxes empty and damaged. The police were alerted and a massive investigation was launched. The police were baffled by the heist, as there was no sign of forced entry, no alarm triggered and no witnesses. They suspected an inside job and questioned the staff and the tenants of the building. They also searched the nearby areas looking for clues and evidence. The police got their first break when they found a partially eaten sandwich near the crime scene, which contained Notar Bartolo's DNA. They also found a videotape in a nearby trash can, which showed Notar Bartolo and his accomplices entering and leaving the building. They identified Notar Bartolo as the mastermind of the heist and issued an international arrest warrant for him and his associates. The police also got a tip from an anonymous informant who claimed to know the location of the loot. 
The police followed the lead and raided a warehouse in a rural area where they expected to find the stolen goods. However, they found nothing but a pile of trash and debris which the thieves had left behind as a decoy. The loot had already been moved to another location and the informant had been paid by the thieves to mislead the police. The police continued their hunt for the thieves and managed to arrest some of them in different countries. They also recovered some of the loot, which had been sold or pawned by the thieves. However, most of the loot and some of the thieves remained at large. Notar Bartolo was arrested in Italy in 2003 and extradited to Belgium in 2005. He was tried and convicted for the heist and sentenced to 10 years in prison. He claimed that he was hired by a mysterious diamond dealer known as the King of Keys who had orchestrated the heist and taken most of the loot. He also claimed that he had no idea who the fifth man, the genius, was and that he had never met him. He denied killing anyone during the heist and expressed regret for the death of a passenger who was accidentally shot by the guard. The Antwerp diamond heist remains one of the most fascinating and mysterious crimes ever committed. A heist that challenged the limits of human ingenuity and audacity. It is a heist that has inspired books, movies and documentaries and has captivated the imagination of the public and the media. It is a heist that has exposed the dark and glamorous side of the diamond industry and has revealed the secrets and intrigues of the diamond world. It is a heist that has changed the lives and destinies of the thieves, the victims and the investigators. It is a heist that has left many questions unanswered and many mysteries unsolved. It is a heist that has become a legend and a legend that has become a heist.